I am Sneha, as he introduced, and I'm a tech technology enthusiast. I love making robots. And I, more than that, I love sharing the knowledge with others. So I started ro doing robotics when I was in college. It all started with fun. So we made robots which uh, you know, go and fight with another robot, which competed in a lot of competitions. So we went to competitions across the globe, won most of them. It was all a lot of uh, pleasure and you know, uh, enjoyment that it gave us. But when I sit back and you know, when I thought, why did I start this, when I sit and think, uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is I was completely bored. Okay? When I went into engineering, again, it was like a school. I had nothing but theory in front of me. I had really different dreams when I entered engineering. It was I wanted everything to be practical, but it was the same thing that I was doing at the end of the day. So I went back and thought, okay, what else can we do? I was a person you know, from the young age who used to meddle with gadgets, break it up. I know I can see that uh, all your faces are smiling. So I know all the kids at their young age would be doing the same thing. But when they grow up, there should be something to mold them. So I looked at robotics as one such field. It, there were so many things to you know, meddle with it. So I liked it. So I started thinking, how am I going to you know, go forward and take up robotics? So I started searching the internet. Uh, that was the first thing anybody would do. So I started searching the internet, uh, pages after pages, websites after websites, uh, finding where to start, how to start, and how to do it. I had a partner in crime as well. Um, you know, who was also, again, same way, bored of all the theoretical learning. So then we started looking and we started building robots together. After about a you know, few years, one or two years, we sat back and thought, okay, what are we doing today? You know, the actual internet, uh, internet is good. You know, we have lots of information out there. But when I wanted to do something, when I wanted to start, it some, start somewhere, I was not able to find the information in a jiffy. I was not able to get, land on the right page at the right time. I was made to skim through so many, many, many data, piles and piles of information. It was flooded with data. I didn't know which was wrong, which was right, which, you know, why something has to, has to be done. None of it was there. So, you know, and this thing kind of slowed our entire process. We, after that few years, when we were in a, you know, state of ready to do some kind of research work, we looked back and we saw we lost so many years doing the same thing that everyone else in the globe is doing, learning the basics. We, were, we lost so many years. And that's when you know, a big thing, you know, we, we kind of understood a big uh, thing that there's something called real evolution. Okay? I, I'm not talking about the biological evolution that takes place hundreds of and thousands of years once. I'm not talking about that. There's a something called real evolution which takes place at a much shorter time at a, at, in, and it's more important as well. This is the knowledge transfer. Yeah, so this is the knowledge transfer. Uh, we are here today with so much technologies. We had uh, speeches on all the technologies and all of this is because humans and mankind have been transferring knowledge at the right time in the right way right from starting from stone writings to books to the satellite communication to the internet. The internet did help us from jumping from here to here. Okay, it was a big leap. It did help us, but we are stuck at this point now. We are not moving forward at, a, at the same pace. We are stuck there. So that's when we thought, okay, we need to do something. We need to find out a solution to keep us going on. You know, uh, not reinvent the same wheel again and again. There's no point in doing it, but still we need to learn all the stuff that other people are doing around the world and only do something over it, not the same thing again and again. So, and we also sat back and thought, you know, who else would be asking the same question? Is there anybody else in the world who's asking the same question but not able to find out the answer still? So that's when we landed in the first place, a parent. So I know there are many parents out here, so you would be, you know, wondering what is my child going to do when he's you know, uh, at the right age when he's waiting for his career to, to be, uh, you know, launched and all that. So what, what is my child going to do? And a good student who is aspiring to be competitive in the market and who are the policy makers, the, an aspiring citizen who wants to create an impact in the society, the education system. Sadly, I don't think much of uh, questioning is going on out there, but still, there are a lot of steps that's happening. And education system is the main 
uh, you know, source of all this evolution that needs to happen. Okay, and then the corporates, the industries, including us, we have a company today. So including us, we're looking out for excellent talents out there. We're not able to get it today. Okay, so anyone, we understood that anyone who wants to thrive in the future, who wants to be there and create a mark, is actually looking at this, who has actually asking this question and not able to find the answer. So we teamed up, okay, so we teamed up and we started a company, SP Robotic Works, right out of college. So by then we had some research work and all done. We had a robot which, you know, writes uh, beautifully. We gave it a pencil, it draws on top of it again and again to show the accuracy, all that. So all that we had done, but, you know, this was a question that, you know, was kept pondering. So one and a half years back, you know, we launched our product, an online tech community for all ages, okay? This online tech community is not just to, it's not just a Facebook or just something like LinkedIn, okay? It is something where you can learn, where you can make, where you can create, and where you can innovate stuffs. So we had a series of robotic kits, uh, IoT kits. It's not just robotics today for us. We have any new technology coming forward, we democratize it, we put it, so that people have access to it in the right way, in the, uh, you know, at the right time. So we started structuring this, we had a structure, we have a structured online learning experience, and we didn't want to stop right there. We took it online so that people know what others are doing across the globe. In a classroom, you just have, say, probably 20 people. That's it, you're limited to 20 people. You won't know what others are doing. That's what the internet helped us to know. So we wanted to include that also into our platform. So now, today, it's a place, you know, where 3,000 plus people are innovating, they're communicating with others, they're talking to each other, knowing what others are doing, building something on top of it, not just, you know, uh, staying back in the basics alone. They're building something on top of it, they're not reinventing the wheel again and again. Okay, so that's what we wanted to do. And, you know, during the development time, we had a lot of questions from a lot of people. Uh, is this the right age? Okay, when can I make them start doing all this? Okay, so we sat back and thought, okay, so should we put something like recommended age 11, recommended age 12, or something like that so that, you know, uh, things are proper. But we thought, okay, no, that's not right. Have, you know, have we ever, any of us, have we ever asked the question of when should I start dreaming? Or have we ever asked the question of when should I start imagining? When should I start being creative? When should I start learning? No, nobody has asked that question. So why should we say this is the right age? Why should we stop prodigies from coming onto the uh, platform? So we said, no, it's up to people. Right from seven-year-olds to, you know, uh, we have 60-year-olds on the platform today, programming, innovating, creating solutions for the society. It's not, so we decided it's not about age, it's not about skill, only the dream and the passion that matters. There's nothing else that should stop you. Okay, so these are some of the solutions which came up from our community, not given by the company, not given by me, it's from the community. Okay, so it's from people, say age 11, 20, 30, all of this is from that community. Okay, we had people doing uh, agriculture-based robots, we had people doing um, food-serving robots, we had people doing customer assistant robots, all solving problems which came to them. Once they learned, they knew the concepts, we're not doing product training out here. We did the conceptual teaching out for them. So once they knew the concepts, they were able to Im imply it everywhere, any place. And once they got the problem, so we made sure as a community, we give them the right opportunities to them. So we ask industries to come forward. If you guys are industrial, please do come forward. We are here to solve problems, not us, the entire community of 3,000 people. And they started giving solutions to them at a cost-effective way, at the right way an Indian market would accept. Okay, there are robots for 20 lakhs, but we cannot afford it. The Indian market cannot. So these people started inventing, innovating stuff for them. So I didn't want to be the only one taking up the stage because I'm talking about the community, I'm talking about people who are actually doing stuff. So I wanted to invite a robot as well as its makers. Okay, so first I'll invite the robot. Bob, can you come onto the stage?
this was not done by me. This was not done by me. It was um, India's first food serving robot, okay, and done by people who are below 20 years. Four people from Bangalore who did this, and he's India's first, and I call Bob and its builders now. That's why they named it Bob and its builders. Can I have the, yep, yeah, come on. So, can you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Varsha. I'm doing my final year engineering in electronics and instrumentation. I'm Anish and I'm studying in grade seven. So, Varsha, can you explain us what this robot does and? Sure. Bob is basically a food serving bot. Bob, it means butler of bistro. So basically- That's a very complex name. They wanted Bob, so they f the real story behind it is they wanted Bob and they found out an expansion after that. <laughs> so Bob is a food serving robot. Uh, the, once the chef keeps the food on the bot, it follows a particular path and delivers it to the particular table. And once it delivers the food, it introduces itself saying, hi, I'm Bob, please enjoy your food. And once the customer takes the food, he can press this button so that it can go back to the kitchen for the next service. It also changes different expressions. There are three different expressions for Bob. When it's following a particular path, it has a normal smile. And if there's any obstacle, there's an angry face and telling the customer to please move. And once it delivers the food, it gives a big smile and also says, enjoy your food. Yeah, so Anish, can you tell me what uh, you did in your, uh, uh, the entire robot? What was your role in it? I did the mechanical design and then the idea was that we need to keep, some, keep this robot simple. And then our country needs something which is cost efficient. And I even uh, did a bit of electronics. Okay, so how did you design it? So why is it at, you know, all these uh, structures? Can you explain? Uh, it had to be simple because if we do it, comp uh, if it is complicated, sometimes uh, it would be more, uh, means it would be expensive. Okay. And even uh, you never know because for one problem, you should go through ev the whole thing. But if it is simple, it's even easier. So going what he's it. trying to say is don't create more problems trying to solve one. Okay, that's, yeah. uh, and that's coming out of a mouth of a 15 year old. Okay, so that's the level of what people are outside. And if you see, this is what every single person out there has in their mind. They don't have the proper guidance, they don't have the proper resources to bring it to their, uh, br bring it front. So that is what we are doing. And, you know, I have his parents sitting out here. Uh, I know how much, you know, they kind of have a feeling of, uh, you know, pride when their students are coming in, you know, creating something like this. And that pride is what keeps us moving forward till there.